I'd like to thank God from whom all blessings flow. And I would like to say that many of the afflictions of the righteous, many, many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. But the Lord will deliver him out of them all, heaven oh. I have often wondered, in my lifetime I have often wondered, and it has troubled me over and over and over again, why are we the way we are? Why are we the way we are? The reasons, the reasons, the reasons. Why are we the way we are? The answers to this question began to fall into place and I had more understanding than ever after I had read and studied the infamous Willie Lynch letter. We are the offspring of test two babies. We have been broken, bred, and crossbred. We have been bred in the bone. We have been reborn and we have been recycled. <laughs> we are the product of recycling. And I'm gonna give you all the information that you need to know for the moment because this is gonna be enough to keep your head busy for quite a while. Before you can ride a horse, you gotta break him. You've gotta break him. <laughs> Before you can ride a man. You've got to break him. Before you can make a horse eat out of your hand. You've got to break him. You've got to break him. Before you can make a black man eat out of your hand. You have got to break him. You've got to break him. Before you can master a black man. 
You've got to break him. You've got to break him? Before you can enslave a black man. You've got to break him. Thank you, you've got to break him. <laughs> Before you can humble a black man. You have got to break him. You've got to break him. Thank you. Thank you. Let me hear you loud and you clear. You've got you, to break him. Thank you. You've got to break him before you can dominate a you, black man. You've got to break him. Before you can boss a black man. You've got to break him. Before you can program a black man. You have got to break him. And before you can intimidate a black man. You have got to break him. Thank you. You've got to break him. You've got to break him. You've got to break him. Before you can program a black man to hate his own kind. You've got to break him. I beg your pardon? You have got to break him. Uh, I beg your pardon? You have got to break him. You've got to break him. No doubt about it. You've got to break him. In the slave quarters, there could be no sleep, no relaxation, no rest, no joy until the black man and the black woman had been broken and programmed. Blacks had to be programmed to, take to the point whereby they would take out their hate, vengeance, and animosity on each other. They had to be doubly programmed to take out their frustrations, their frustrations on each other. There could be no sleep, no joy, no rest until the black male and black female roles had been reverted. Until the male and female roles had been reverted. If they had been breaking chickens, they would make hens crow and roosters lay eggs. This is what has been done to us. Making hens crow and making roosters lay eggs. You know, there was once an old uh, Negro song that they used to sing. I wouldn't classify it as a spiritual, but it was one of the old songs that blacks used to sing. And the song was, I'm coming. I'm coming, but my head is bending low. Well, there came along in 1960 a new type of man. And he sang the same type of melody with the song. But he says, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm coming too, but I'll be damned if my head is bending low. Let me tell you some of the things that the, that the white slave owner had to do to our women, to our beautiful black women. The black slave woman, after the roles had been reverted, After she had become the leader, the black slave woman thus became the overseer and the overlords within the white master's household. And wherever and whenever she could obtain, obtain information of importance, she became the white man's snitcher his informer, but only for the sake of her survival and the survival of offspring. She watched over the white master while he slept. He couldn't sleep as long as those black savages were on the romp and the rampage. But she watched over her master she watched over his plantation while he slept. She watched over his children. 
she nursed his children from her breast. She watched over his plantation. She cooked for him. She watched over everything that belonged to the master. <laughs> she slept with him whenever he desired her. She was the beginning of the first crime stoppers. <laughs> She was forced to castrate her own man mentally for the sake of her survival and the sake of her offspring. Please come on and travel with me. All of you who are within hearing distance, please come on and travel with me. It is my pleasure and my obligation to bring this little taste of history to you. I'd like to introduce you to my, my co-host and my dear friend of many years, Mrs. Sharon Jefferson Rucker. And we are now going to get into the infamous the infamous Willie Lynch letter. And please, listen carefully, because you will never be the same. You will never be the same. You will understand why we are the way that we are. This is a big question. Why we are the way that we are. All right, Mrs. Ruck, Mrs. Jefferson Ruck. 